In this video, I'll be shrink wrapping a GT150 for under $25. Stick around to find out how. For the support, I'm just using simple sawhorse brackets that you can buy at Home Depot. And for the shrink wrap film, I'm using vapor barrier. And this roll cost me $120. It's 20 feet wide and 100 feet long. And this is a Super 6 Vapor Barrier by Everbuilt. This is not a professional shrink wrapping torch. Professional shrink wrapping torch is like a little pistol. It has a self igniter and it fans the flame out like a spray gun. This is a roofing torch. It just has a round flame, no igniter which is a real pain in the ass, but these cost about $120 from your big box stores, and it works. I mean, it's called a belly band, and normally they use uh, strapping material with some nice, really convenient clips that you can just uh, snake it through, snake the band through the clip and just pull it tight, and it just snaps it right tight. So on some holes, like this one, the rope, it needs to be held up so I just made these little ropes here just to hold it up from hanging down and that only serves a purpose until I get the plastic on there and you can see I just run the rope through the bow eye so my next step is going to be to take the plastic wrap it around so I'll go over the top and just tuck it up underneath here then I can heat it with the torch and tap it and that'll kind of squeeze the two pieces together and it kind of glues them together when they're warm. Probably just run a couple of ropes down and around to the other side and pull them real tight before I heat the top. And that should really shrink it up nice. Well, it turns out that that's actually very close to the right height. It just needed to be a little bit higher in the front. And now I'm just going to pull the, the vapor barrier over top and I'll start shrinking it up. I'm going to tuck the plastic under the belly band now. I'll weld it and then this side will be secure then I can go on the other side, pull it really tight and wrap it around and weld it. So this will be fairly tight before I even start to shrink wrap it. If you notice, I've got quite a bit of overlap here, and I've brought the back piece up over the rub rail. And the reason for that is, when I weld this along here, this is a good spot for me to weld it here. I can really push the two pieces together when they're warm and really get a good bond there, and it's away from the rope. I could do it just as easily along here and weld this tight down here, but if that's welded tight, it's going to be very hard next year to get the, the rope out and I'd like to reuse the rope again next year. So I'll try and concentrate my welds up here. Of course I'm going to be heating down here, but I'd like to get the majority of the welding done here away from the rope. So I can just slide the rope out next year. It's not necessary to get all the wrinkles out, but the more wrinkles you get out, the better it's going to look. It's still going to hold the same, but it'll look a lot cleaner. Now 
I'm just gonna go along, get some welds on here so that this side is secure. And I can go to the other side and do the same. Okay, so now I'm going to weld it along here, and then I'll pull it tight. Now that I've got both sides welded, I can go ahead and put my uh, straps in along the bottom. They go underneath the hole and they join the two ropes together. And now I can pull tight and hopefully grab the pull this down like that. Get it nice and tight before I even start shrink wrapping. Well, I think that would probably be good enough, but I've got one last piece of rope left. So I'm just going to do one on the bow here. The first thing you should always do is try and wrap the propeller because you don't want water to go down inside the propeller because there's a big cavity in the lower unit. And if it fills with water, then it could break and crack open. by hooking on to the front, wrapping that up tight, and then pulling it at the back. 
Look how tight I got it across the top. I'm going to go pull it on the other side and we'll see how much tighter it gets. In my area, professional shrink wrappers charge about $15 to $17 per foot to shrink wrap a boat. This material costs, I think it was $1.05 per linear foot and it's 20 feet wide. But for the 16 foot boats, I can run the plastic across instead of lengthwise and I can do this boat for probably about, I'm going to guess, 15 feet of material. So that's only about 16, 17, maybe 18 dollars. Whatever it is. The torch, like I said, it cost me uh, it was 129 or whatever it was. it was. I think it was 129 dollars. Had it for quite a few years now. It's shrunk a lot of boats with it. So I mean, if you add a little bit of depreciation for the cost of the torch, maybe a couple of dollars there, and uh, a little bit of propane, and some rope. The cost for me to shrink wrap this whole boat with vapor barrier is, you know, maybe 25 bucks to wrap this boat, a uh, 16 to 18 foot boat. So yeah, it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty big uh, cost advantage. shrink a lot of other stuff. I've got some outboard motors, I've got car parts, stuff like that, and I don't want this stuff in my garage taking up space. So I can throw it on the skid, put some shrink wrap on it, wrap it up. It's really convenient just to have this stuff lying around. Uh, and, and that's the bonus. I couldn't have a professional shrink wrapper called in because I want to shrink wrap a, an outboard motor or a couple of boat or a couple of uh, car parts. But it's no problem for me to pull out the vapor barrier and the roofing torch and shrink them up. So you can see here, um, I've got the torch pretty much perpendicular to the surface. So there are basically three different types of flames. There's what they call a neutral flame, a carburizing flame, or a reducing flame, and an oxidizing flame. When you're doing shrink wrapping, I find it's best to try and keep with a neutral flame. And uh, that's basically, you want to adjust the volume of propane so that it's not like roaring. Uh, and it's not also kind of a lame, kind of like lazy flame either. You want to get it right in the middle, right in that sweet spot. And if you have a neutral flame, it's it's uh, calming, you might say. The sound of the torches is just calming like a nice wind or something. And it's not like, like rough sounding. And that's kind of the best flame I've found to use. Uh, Sometimes you, you have to use a hotter flame sorry, because you want to get more heat for it to be at a further distance, then you have to move a lot faster. Another thing that I've noticed about the vapor barrier is that it really does retain its heat for a long time. Uh, you can heat something up and you, you think that it's all cooled down because it looks like it's shrunk and you come back over it a few minutes later and give it another blast of heat and the next thing you know you have a hole and 
now it's because even like I say even after you think it's all cooled down if you touch it it's actually still pretty warm it, it takes quite a while it has a lot of insulated properties I guess you could say and uh, you have to kind of be careful because once you get a hole in this you kind of have to start over the holes happen on the areas that are not that are spanning over like this particular area that I'm shrinking right now that's where you would get a hole because it's kind of stretched over and there's no backer behind it if you recall how I welded the sides there I heated it up and tapped it against the rub rail without the rub rail being behind there or without another solid surface there it's very very challenging to try and actually in my uh, experience it's impossible to uh, join two pieces together without the backer behind it to tap against. That's mainly because of the affordability and just the convenience. The sides are always the funnest part of doing this. It's just easy to reach. You can hold the torch perpendicular and you can see what's going on. It's a bit, bit of a crude torch compared to where, what a professional shrink wrapper would use. But the long handle on it does help in situations like this. Working pretty aggressively here. I'm doing a lot of shrink in one pass. And that's not always the best way to do it. And you'll see in a second here why. Right there, right above the horn, you can see I just got a hole in there. And you can avoid this by making several passes. You could like, as you can see I'm doing here, I'm just kind of going over it quickly in multiple passes to avoid overheating it any more than it is. You can see it's shrinking a lot there on the front. So that's it. I don't really have to do any more than that and it'll be fine. It was, uh, about 20 minutes to shrink it and about 45 minutes to set it up. Oh, I should really shrink this part. You can tell it wasn't shrunk.
one thing I have to say about shrink wrapping is it's actually kind of fun. You know, I kind of look forward to it a little bit. 